Welcome to The Real Joe Show. On this episode, I am excited to introduce to you Gene Donahue of Gene Donahue Coaching. And it's all about profits, right? That's what you hear. That's what you're in the real estate business for. And Gene is a coach and he coaches people on how to put profits first and run the business that way. So, Gene. Joe, pleasure yeah. to be here. A pleasure to be here, definitely. Yeah, thanks for coming on. As mm-hmm. you know, the show is all about real estate agents and, mm-hmm. and helping them give them tips and tricks and help them build their business. And one of the things that, strangely enough, is overlooked, making decisions based on profit. Absolutely. Uh, before Absolutely. We, so we're going to dig into that. But before we get there, let's talk about you. How'd you get into this? What's your real estate background and yeah. your, your accounting background? Let's dig into that. Yeah. So I actually became a real estate agent back in 2011. Okay. The market was horrible that time. And, and people were going, why, why are you getting into real estate? I'm like, well, you know, if I could make it here, you know, All right. so uh, I was, I was one of the fortunate ones who had a successful career in production. Um, second year, I did 23 transactions. Nice. First year was eight. So I, I really began to, to ramp up. And part of that success was having a good eye on the finances of the company. Uh, I eventually left production and I was a, a broker in charge in South Carolina. I had over 100 agents there. And we were in the top six in the MLS as far as um, production goes. And then I moved on and I was a national director for one of the large independent companies in the United States and I directed their mentor program. Great. And here I am today. And um, today, Profit First is what it's all about. I'm a certified Profit First coach. That's fantastic. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Let's, let's, let's go back just to build some uh, a bridge between 2011 and where we are now. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. a lot of agents, most agents that are in this business right now were not in business in 2011. Right. That's just the way this business works. Agents mm-hmm. just transition out of this more quickly than stay mm-hmm. and more often than stay. Mm-hmm. So 2011, you, you mentioned it was a rough year. What was going on then that made it a rough year? And how does that compare to the, you know, the post Mm-hmm. The, you know, the, the, the post COVID. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it, you know, 2011, the market wasn't really that great. Um, I had joined uh, what at the time was a brand new company. Nobody okay. really ever heard of it. It's there's three letters in it. Okay. It begins with E and ends with P. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was one of the first 100 agents over there. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, there was a lot of ability for me to connect with people who were able to really be a mentor for me gotcha. at, at that time. Gotcha. So, um, I was very fortunate, I, I think. And we were going through, at that point, were, we were still coming out of the crash of 2008. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we were dealing with a lot of foreclosures, a lot of short sales, mm-hmm. lots of inventory. Mm-hmm. Buying wasn't that hot. I, almost everybody back then, if you wanted, listings were there. Mm-hmm. Not like today. Right. So this mm-hmm. market is completely flipped. It was a, it was a super buyer's market back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, negotiations were intense and common. Property sitting on the market for too long. Yeah. Compared to now, it, it was completely different. Completely different. Completely different. Mm-hmm. One thing that hasn't changed, <laughs> you still got to make a profit. Absolutely. Right. So in any market, Absolutely. in any market, mm-hmm. in every market, it's all about making a profit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now you're working with I, I, individual agents, teams, individual co- individual Ind- companies. Independence. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so let's let's yeah. talk about let's talk about the independent agent because that's the majority of people. Sure, out there, right? Sure, absolutely. So an independent agent gets into this business it takes a little bit of while. It takes a while to get up and running. Right, right. When should they start paying attention to their financials? Uh, right away. Right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not something that uh, that you really want to say. Well, when I'm starting to make money, then I'll pay attention to it. So. You really have to start paying attention right away to to where your money is going and how you're reinvesting back into your business. The mistake that a lot of agents make when they come into the business, you know, they get that $8,000 check and they spend it all. Yeah. They take it for themselves and they spend it all. And they they forget that it really out of the $8,000, 
it's not all theirs. That's right. So I see a lot of agents make the mistake of not saving for taxes. Taxes. That's that's a big chunk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You should be putting a minimum of 15% away after each transaction. What else should they be putting money away for? One of the things that really made a big difference for me when, when I was a brand new agent is um, one of my mentors told me to pay yourself the same amount of money every single month, mm -hmm. no matter where your transactions were. So from a, an agent standpoint, you actually have to first go and figure out what is your lifestyle budget? How much money do you need to support your current lifestyle today and thinking into the future, what will it look like and how much money will you need then? So let's say, for instance, you need $4,000 a month to support your household budget uh, and you make 8,000. So remember, you got to put 15% away. Yeah. You have operating expenses, which if you put it all together, most people are spending eight to 12 percent on marketing and then you've got other costs you've got you know that go along with it and then with the operating expenses then you have the ability to reinvest back into your business and that's that's key yeah i, I think what happens a lot is agents don't realize they're actually in a business they're yes. building a business they're building mm -hmm. a company Mm -hmm. Whether there's yeah. a name on that, there's a build, there's no building, there's no name on it, whatever it is, mm -hmm. say you are building a company, a, a mm -hmm. business where you're going to have to have infrastructure of some sort, whether it's marketing, transaction costs, and you're going to need to have that money. Mm -hmm. And that business is what pays you the salary. Absolutely. Of that 4, Absolutely. Right. Yes. Yes. And, and unfortunately, you know, as an industry, we don't really do a good job training our agents on that. That's right. I mean, I mean, I mean, I remain, I rem fondly remember in my licensing class talking about what to do with your money. Oh no, that no. wasn't that. Never. No. 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 <laughs> no. You have to learn how many how many square feet in there. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 It, it, exactly. Exactly. And here's also another key as well for long term growth and to support your lifestyle put away a certain percentage of every single month into your savings account, Ooh. your business savings account. That's going to allow you to do two things. Number one, if we think back to the pandemic, where all of a sudden in some areas, real estate was no longer considered necessary right. and there were no transactions. So those agents who didn't have any money, put aside for a rainy day, we're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. So, you know, there are going to be months, especially at the beginning where you're going to go like this, but if you have money set aside, that makes this a lot easier. So what do you recommend for an individual agent to have on in their bank account mm -hmm. before they actually start getting more than that salary? If, mm -hmm. that's, if they really wanted to do something special. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you should have three to six months. Okay. Of, of OPEX and spending away in your business. Well, let's look at that. Yeah. Six mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. Right now, we yep. had a big shift. And, and, and when things shift, agents don't really realize it probably mm -hmm. till that three months or maybe mm -hmm. even six months hits right. where they're like, well, wait a minute, mm -hmm. something's going on here. Mm -hmm. So that I think that six month is probably the better, better yes. point. Yeah. By the time you realize it, by the time you shift and, mm -hmm. and and pivot to do something mm -hmm. different to help get you back up on your feet, that three months is gone. Yes. Yeah. And there's a great quarterly exercise as, as well that you can do and look at look at your business. Um, <clears throat> keep, cut, reduce. Keep, cut, reduce. Yes. Yeah, so look at every single expense you have and, and keep, cut it, like get rid of it or reduce it. And if you do that on a quarterly basis and, and be, be aggressive with it, you'll be able to save more. You'll be able to get a better return, a better ROI on the money that you're spending it as well. So let's stick on the individual agent, individual agent for a little bit. And there's a certain point where you can come in and start to help them. Mm -hmm. At what level of 
production or gross commission income, mm-hmm. should should they be dialing up you and saying, "Hey, I need mm-hmm. someone to look at my books." Right. Right. Mm-hmm. What 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 price point is that? Yeah. So, um, I I never want to turn away any agent that sure. that calls me. So I'm getting, no matter what your production is, if you call me and, and I'll have a conversation with you, right. and I can point you in the right direction if you know if we can't work together. But really, uh, clients that that we work really well together, you know, they've been in production for a little bit. They're um, probably close to that six figures in, in GCI, okay. yeah. uh, and they're looking to grow their business and grow it profitably and you know, make it sustainable, make it reproduction. What are you seeing as some of the top three mistakes agents are making on an individual agents are making where they're not taking care of their business and they could, they could be taking more profit out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, we're all small business owners. So so we do, we do have to, you know, have those skills. And one of the things I recommend as well is, and it's part of the profit first program is actually to start putting away some profit sharing for yourself. So starting off small, maybe 1% a month and eventually build up to that 10% per month. Uh, and then every quarter, you have a nice profit share. Gotcha. That you do whatever you want to do. So profit is your reward for working on the business. What you receive, your monthly salary, that's for working in the business. That's a, that's a great way to look at it. Mm-hmm. That's a great way to look at mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And I, one of the biggest challenges uh, I've found with agents is they don't spend the time to work on the business enough. Yeah, you get you get into this busy mode, and you know, especially see it in some of the um, newer agents. You get busy in production, and then you forget to market yourself. Yeah, and then that's what gets us this right well, here. <laughs> yeah, don't have well, don't ahead. ask me how I know that. <laughs> when they've done that, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, so mm-hmm. that that's smart. That's smart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's look at teams. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Teams, are multidimensional. Yep. And ideally, the first person that somebody's going to hire or their first move in creating a team should be a full time assistant or at, right. at minimum a part time assistant. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And then to start to branch out, what are you seeing uh, when you're looking at somebody's their numbers? Mm-hmm. On the team level, what are some of the mm-hmm. points that jump out at you? Well, and which can help them. Yeah, it depends upon what the team leader's goal is. So most team leaders want to eventually get out of production mm-hmm. and become more of the rainmaker or the CEO or whatever. Correct. So, so that's really where we we need to concentrate then is what do we need to do to allow you to get out of production? What will your cost be? What, how much money do you need to put aside for, again, rainy day? Right. <clears throat> and so, you know, if, if that's the case, then that's where, that's where we, we look at. Now, if the team leader wants to stay in production, and most of the time when a team leader does that, they're working on the seller side. Right then we need to put put together a whole nother aspect of the business. Mm-hmm. And, and I tell you, the best time to, to engage if, if you're running a team is, is at the beginning. Definitely. Because I, I, even before you make your first hire, we can get together. We can make a difference in, in, in your business. So you look at what their goals are. Mm-hmm. Tell me about that process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Event, it, we sit down together and have a discussion, really, of, of what it, what you want your business to look like in a couple of years, what you want your lifestyle to look like in a couple of years as well. You know, one of the things also that we don't do a good job with in the real estate industry is preparing for retirement. Yeah, right. So, you know, going back to that, that six months of, of savings, what I did, and I recommend as well, once you get the six months of savings, you still put into savings. However, you keep the six months, anything above and beyond that, put it in an IRA. Right. 
and, and start saving for your retirement. I mean, if you're running a team that, that's profitable and your splits are, are, are correct, you know, I talk to team, they want to start a team and they're thinking, well, I'll think of maybe a 20, no, 20% is not going to cut it. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, or you're going to go broke. Right. So, um, you know, if their splits are proper and you're running the team properly, you've got a nice vehicle for retirement. So that, you just brought something up, and this this applies to not just teams, but also applies to companies where mm-hmm. you start looking at splits mm-hmm. and fees, and mm-hmm. uh, a lot of agents get hung up on that. Yeah, and mm-hmm. there there's a model for everybody. Sure, right? absolutely, absolutely. What are some some of the you get from zero cost to just the transaction cost up mm-hmm. to you know fifty mm-hmm. percent? Right, right, split. More, mm-hmm. even more, I've seen, right? Sure. Since 40, 60. So mm-hmm. tell me, how, like, what are your thoughts on that? It, 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 yeah. It, that's a big, quite, that's a big, quite ask. Yeah. Um, what yeah. You, we could do a whole thoughts? other episode know, right? on this. <laughs> I, think, I, I think what, what it comes down to is, is, is often the coaching, the support, what right. are they actually getting for that money? Yeah. And what are they not getting? I think mm-hmm. it's probably the bigger thing mm-hmm. when you're going into a model that has, really high splits mm-hmm. for the agent, what do they not get? Right? Yeah, so so cost only comes into account when there's a perceived lack of value, okay? So if you're running in a traditional split with a cap and you are engaged in, in the brokerage, you're giving back in the brokerage, you're using their tools and not spending a lot of money outside of you, that, yeah. then that split makes us make sense right. for you. Right. But you know, if, if, if you're a lone wolf, if you will, you know, you like working by yourself, um, you have your own tools and, and they work for you, your own systems, then looking at that split may be, may be something to consider right. because usually the split is the highest cost an agent has. And, and if there's no value on the other side of that, then it's something to consider in your business. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah. 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 And so at the end of the day, it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep. Right. And is, is that, is there value in that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's yep. go. Let's let's go down to how much you keep. Okay. I'm on social media all the time. Right. Part of my job. Mm-hmm. You and me both. <laughs> right. Every agent out there is rich, 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 rich. Oh yeah. They got money. They're sitting mm-hmm. in front of their beautiful cars. Mm-hmm. They're on trips. Mm-hmm. Am I doing something wrong? Mm-hmm. Um, no. <laughs> all right. So I was talking with a team last month. All right. DCI was in in a little bit over six hundred. Okay. Okay. Decent. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Six hundred K. Yeah. Sure. They lost money last year. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How how could they do that? Yeah. <laughs> Six hundred thousand dollars. They lost money. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's just not keeping track of of money in money in versus money out. All wealth is built on a system. You have a system for bringing money in, and you have a system for spending money. And even if you don't have a system for spending money, you think you might not have a system. You do. It's whatever. (laughs) (laughs) See it, spend it. Right, right, exactly. So in this this particular case, um, he was spending a lot on brick and mortar. Agents weren't really using it, so we cut out the brick and mortar. Gotcha. And he went to a full virtual and now he's doing that. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's just a, it's, so you just help people shift and take look at their business in a different way. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I said it was a team it was actually an independent broker into he was a team someplace else and split off. So. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, we look at, you know, as agents, we look at how many millions of dollars people mm-hmm. are doing and and we see these high numbers mm-hmm. and we see these flashy pictures. Yeah. And I think we just get mesmerized that these right. people are doing phenomenal. Uh-huh. Yet yeah. They, they're not making any money. Yeah. Sales, yeah. Or it, very little. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know, for me, I'm, 
And not because I drive a Camry, and I do, but I think every agent should have a Camry, you know, logic behind them. You know, especially right. if you want to support a particular lifestyle and you want to be able to one day retire. Mm -hmm. I think I, I think the the ideal or the most important thing in, in with your business is profit first. Yeah, absolutely. And, that, and that's what you call that's what you're you're mm -hmm. certified as a profit mm -hmm. first coach. Correct. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the agents need to have that mindset. Yeah, yeah. And and the nice thing about what I offer for people is because I have been in almost every aspect of of real estate from in production to running a brokerage to you know a director level at the national. So I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. And you know, when I was over the mentor program, you know, this is this is what really hit home for me and why I focus so much today on the profit it is the failure that I saw of brand new agents right. who come in and think it's easy and it's, yeah. and it and it's it's simple, <laughs> but it's not That's easy. Right. That's right. And so the failure rate is, is so high in this industry. And, you know, it's I'm on a mission to help real estate agents, teams, brokers, you know, build the lifestyle that they desire. Every single real estate business, whether you're a single agent, a team, a brokerage, your business matters not only to um you know the overall industry you know real estate is 17 percent of our gdp but also to you as as an agent it's important to you because you have a family to support because you have things that you want to do you have clients that you need to take care of you are part of the community and giving back. So every single real estate business matters. I know I'm looking at the camera right now instead be. of you, but because, because I want you to hear that, I really do. Your business matters. And, and you know, if you go from a profit first mindset, then you, know, you are gonna be successful in this business. Yeah, and, and and you owe it to yourself. You owe it to the mm -hmm. clients. You owe it to the community. Right, and right. All those other people that mm -hmm. by that one transaction that you do, yes. you're putting a lot of people to work. Absolutely. So it's very important that you do stay in this business. Mm -hmm. you Absolutely. Do stay profitable. Mm -hmm. So, so Gene, what's when should somebody be reaching out to you? Uh, now? <laughs> <laughs> is there no? A, is there such thing as <laughs> too late? I guess. Um. Or too soon. No, no. And again, I'll have a conversation with, you know, any agent who just, even if they just need to talk through something, I'm, I'm here to help. Um, it's never too late if you're willing to, you know, really dig in and change, change that mindset and do the work that's required. It's, it's never too late and it's never too early. The earliest you know, the earlier you set yourself up for success, the better off you're going to be. Um, you know, working again, call me, I'll have a conversation with you. If you want to hire me as a coach, if you're a brand new agent, you've only done two or three transactions, probably we're not going to be the right fit. Just, right. you know, um, there's a cost, obviously, if you want to work with me. So, um, but, you know, it's never too, too late and never too early. Good, mm -hmm. good, good. Yeah, it sounds like you, you, you helped save this guy who was losing yeah. money. Yeah. Uh, this person. Mm -hmm. um, and now you, you set it yeah. up so set him up for her up for success, which mm -hmm. is great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I strongly recommend as well. Uh, you start, if an agent's out there, if you're out there and you're working and you're starting to see some transactions coming in and you got to set up your systems. If you don't have within your brokerage, you don't have a mentor that's helping you out, mm -hmm. reach out to Gene. The best way for people to reach you, Gene, website? Yep, DeanDonahueCPO.com, and CPO is your chief profit officer. Chief <laughs> profit officer. <laughs> that's right. And that's why we're all here. Yeah. That's why we're in the business. That's all about absolute, abso absolutely. Right. And it doesn't make a difference what brokerage you're with. It's, it doesn't. I, I want to help you be successful. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And, it, you know, as mm -hmm. much fun and as much good we're doing as all mm -hmm. that, it's, it's not worth it unless we're going to make money. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So reach mm -hmm. out to Gene if you're thinking about really digging into your numbers. And if mm -hmm. you're not thinking about really 
digging into your numbers, call Gene because you need to, <laughs> right? <laughs> so GeneDonahueCPO.com. Gene, thanks so much for coming on. Absolutely. Really My pleasure. My pleasure. It's, Great it's, conversation. Um, yeah, it's been fun. Mm-hmm. All right.